Hi again, students. In this video, we will study another quasi-experimental technique that can be used to obtain causal estimates of a treatment from observational data. This is a pretty fun one called regression discontinuity, or RD for short. RD is covered in Chapter 6 of our textbook. Suppose we want to measure the effect of being a National Merit Scholar on college GPA, or college completion rate, or even on salary in the first job after college. Well, for sure, we can't just compare the GPAs of National Merit Scholars and other students because selection into treatment isn't random. You have to score very high on a standardized test to be a National Merit Scholar. In other words, those are smart kids who would very likely do well in school and in life without getting the scholarship. So we can't simply attribute their superior performance to the effect of the scholarship. Regression discontinuity gives us an unbiased estimate of the treatment effect by comparing outcomes of students who just barely qualified for the scholarship with outcomes of students who just barely missed qualifying for the award. Let's consider an example. Suppose that in Oklahoma, the cutoff PSAT score for winning the national merit is 1400. While it's a bit more complicated than that in real life, let's say that students scoring 1400 or above get a national merit scholarship, while those below do not. While we know we can't just compare the outcomes of the two groups, regression discontinuity proposes comparing the outcomes of people just above 1400 to the outcomes of people just below 1400. Formally, we can consider that right around that cutoff score, the awarding of the scholarship is essentially random. One student fell ill and did a bit worse. Another student dreamt about cosines and did a little bit better. The gist of the matter is those who just missed the cutoff are great counterfactuals for those who just made the cutoff. Let's look at two graphs that explain the technique. First, consider a graph with the probability of getting the scholarship on the vertical axis and the PSAT score on the horizontal. In our example, for PSATs below 1400, the probability of treatment is zero, and for scores above 1400, the probability jumps to one. This is the discontinuity that we are using to identify the treatment effect of the scholarship. Now consider a graph with, say, salary at first job after college on the vertical axis and PSAT score again on the horizontal. To test whether the scholarship increases earnings, we basically look for a discontinuous jump in earnings at the cutoff score of 1400. In other words, does the discontinuous jump in the probability of treatment produce a discontinuous jump in post-college earnings? If so, we attribute the jump as being caused by the scholarship. The estimated treatment effect is simply the size of the jump. Graphs like these are at the heart of RD analysis. As we will discuss later, we can estimate the size and significance of the jump using local linear regression or a polynomial regression. But if the graph doesn't show a jump, there's no real effect to be found by further statistical analysis. I also want to mention that what is required is not that the probability of treatment goes from 0 to 1 at the cutoff. That's the cleanest case, called a sharp discontinuity. All that's required is the probability of treatment jumps discontinuously at the cutoff. Cases where it is less than 0 to 1 jump are called fuzzy discontinuities. This graph gives an example of a fuzzy discontinuity. As always, there are factors that can confound our analysis and we need to check for them. Fortunately, it is fairly straightforward to do so. The first thing is to make sure people can't precisely manipulate the treatment. For example, if the treatment was contingent on having an income below a certain threshold, we'd want to make sure that people with too high income were not strategically underreporting to qualify for the treatment. This is important because we are assuming that people on either side of the threshold are essentially the same. If people who are truly away from the threshold can misleadingly appear to be at the threshold, it messes up the validity of our identification. We can test this simply by plotting the distribution of the variable that determines treatment against the test score and make sure that it is smooth around the cutoff value. In a similar way, we want to make sure that other potentially relevant factors do not take a discontinuous jump at the threshold. For example, if we graph parental income against PSAT score and it also jumped discontinuously at 1400, then we would be worried that the effect on earnings could be partly due to parental income and not just to getting the scholarship. Again, we can test this by plotting the distribution of the potential confounding variable against the test score and make sure it is smooth around the cutoff value. For estimating the treatment effect in an RD model, we can either use all the data in a parametric model that is usually a polynomial or use limited data around the cutoff point in a non-parametric model that is usually a local linear regression. In the first case, we are worried about getting the functional form correct. For example, if we estimate a linear model and there is a smooth nonlinear relationship between the outcome variable, in our example earnings, and the variable determining treatment, test scores, we may find a jump, 
that truly is not there. Consider the following graph from your text that illustrates the issue. As you can see, given the true nonlinear relationship in the data, the linear model estimated treatment effect that is not really there. Now here's an example of fitting a polynomial to estimate the treatment effect. The model in the graph regresses the outcome on the level, square, and cube of x, along with a dummy variable that shifts the intercept at the cutoff point. In this example, a significant treatment effect is found. Another option is to estimate separate polynomials on each side of the cutoff along with the dummy variable. Most RD papers will present several different estimations of the treatment effect. The non-parametric approach only uses data near the cutoff and runs a linear regression on the subset of the data. Analogous to the functional form issue in the parametric approach, here we have the issue of how much data to discard, or more formally, of choosing the bandwidth for the non-parametric model. Again, in most cases, papers will present results from several different bandwidth choices. Given the choice of bandwidth, the regression is just the outcome regressed on the variable determining treatment plus a dummy variable to shift the intercept at the cutoff. Alternatively, the regression line could be allowed to have a different slope on either side of the cutoff. This graph illustrates the idea. We have data on either side of the cutoff, and our choice of bandwidth determines how much of the data we use to estimate the treatment effect with a local linear regression. Because we are actually getting local randomization of treatment, most RD papers do not add other covariates to the estimated models. The regressions are just the outcome regressed on a polynomial of the variable determining treatment plus a dummy for the possible shift at the cutoff on all the data, or the outcome variable linearly regressed on the treatment determining variable along with a cutoff dummy on a subset of the data near the cutoff. The big advantage of RD is that it comes closer to actual randomization of treatment than any of the other quasi-experimental methods. The big disadvantage is the RD requires a treatment rule that has a discontinuity in the probability of treatment at some known measurable point. Despite this complication, researchers in health sciences, labor economics, development economics, and political science have all found productive uses for the technique. Researchers have even used RD where the cutoff is geographical rather than a test score or an income level. When conditions allow, RD is the cleanest and most convincing way of estimating a treatment effect in observational data. The major issues are making sure you have an adequate functional form and parametric estimation, and showing that your results do not depend heavily on your choice of bandwidth in non-parametric estimation.